offensive games of the year, guys. Season high in assists, 36. Season high field goal percentage, 62.8. They shot 41% from three. Season high with the bench points, 71. And by the way, LeBron, triple-double in just 30 minutes. I know you like that number. Big game, James. It's a lot of fun when you play like that. It's a lot of fun. And I think what we witnessed right before All-Star break when they were struggling a little bit was the making of what we've seen here in the last couple games. You know, uh, a bench uh, that knows how to sustain. Yeah, they had to create some new scenarios, start different lineups, bring in Jones, but their meat and potatoes is their defense. And, you know, even though they were losing some games, their defense was still holding up. But tonight, it all came together for a great bench. They shot the ball well. I was very happy to see uh, KCP get back involved. They're going to need him. So a great performance by, you know, the guys tonight. James, I agree with you. KCP huge, and I want to talk about him a little later on. Rob, it seemed to me the emphasis was on sharing the basketball. Offense was getting a little stagnant before that all-star break. It was an emphasis tonight. 36 assists for a season high. That's a lot of assists. And the thing, if you watch this team, the ball just popped. It moved. Before, it was like, okay, guys, you're going to play one-on-one. Are we going to get it? You're going to try to go to the hole. But when the Lakers play basketball like this, because if you really look at this team, you got a lot of guys who can score mm -hmm. if you put them in the right position. You just got to give them the ball and not dribble, dribble, dribble. And when they're passing the rock and everybody's moving, it makes it tough on the defensive guys. And we all know when you have a team like the Golden State Warriors who's wounded, you go at them, and yes. that's what they did tonight. Yeah, take the life away from him. That's exactly what they did. THT, possibly, arguably, his best game as a pro. Let's go back to the Bay. Big part of that bench, THT, with Mike Trudell. All right, Taylor Horton Tucker, kind enough to join us here on the postgame show. Taylor, what got into the bench tonight? Uh, you, Trez, and Kuz especially just erupted. What were you seeing against this Golden State Warriors squad? Uh, you know, we just wanted to come out and be aggressive, you know, with having guys out and, uh, you know, dealing with injuries. you got to have the next man up mentality. So just being able to come in, uh, being aggressive, and have some success was great for us tonight. Yeah, you're missing Caruso in addition to the two starters with AD and Marcus all out. But focusing on the bench for a minute, what is it like playing with Kuz and Trez, two guys that can finish, of course, uh, really well around the basket. Kuz can hit threes. A lot of firepower there for you to deal with. Uh, it's great. You know, just it makes your job easier, you know, as a ball handler and somebody that uh, has a ball in their hand sometimes. So just being able to have those guys out there is a, you know, it's a plus. And, you know, I feel uh, confident every time I'm out there with them. All right, just the second game after the break now. What did you feel like the All-Star break did for you guys? It really looked like there was a lot of energy throughout the roster on this one. Uh, you know, it just gave us a break. You know, we had the shortest, I feel like, turnaround, you know, in, in history. So just being able to have them, uh, the days off, you know, gave us, you know, a little break that we needed. So just being able to have that, uh, you know, it gave us some confidence coming into the uh, second half of the season. And then, Taylor, just for you individually, did you look at anything over the break or just talk to some of the coaches, look at some of the film from the first half and, and notice anything about your play that you're able to carry forward into tonight's game and then into the rest of the season moving forward? Uh, just, you know, like for the rest of the season moving forward, you just want to keep getting better. Uh, you know, that's the main focus. So just being able to have the opportunity to get better around the great players that, I, that we have on our team is great for me and my career. All right, Taylor, big 18-point, 10 assists, double-double tonight. We appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. You know, it's like choosing between your kids when everyone has such a good game. I'm mm -hmm. looking at Trez's line. I'm looking at Kuz. We're talking KCP, LeBron with a triple-double. But since THT just talked to Trudell, let's discuss. I mean, 18 points, 7 of 10, 10 dimes. He goes double-double, 18 and 10, big game. I don't know. For me, that's, that's his best. He was under control. He yeah. was aggressive. He got everyone involved. He hit shots. He, he best game. Like you know, he, he played the point. He played the point. He, he handled the ball well, under control. Um, you know, and, and don't really have, like, one superstar on the floor, really, in LeBron. So this is what happens when, you know, you take away AD, you take away Caruso, Marcus All's out, uh, they're missing some players. So they know they have to play team ball. And, you know, uh, Tucker just taking advantage of his length. He's under control. Look at that back door to LeBron. The more and more they've been able to play together, uh, the better they got, and especially this kid. Always under control, a shot maker, uh, and, you know, just a great game for him tonight. Probably his best this yeah. year. When you watch him play, it's like he's starting to understand the game more and more. Mm -hmm. And then you also have to realize this dude is not even old enough to buy alcoholic beverages. I don't even think he's not even 21 yet, is he? 
No. No. That's what I'm saying. 19, so he, right? he should be still in high school. He should be still in college and still learning the game from, from a coach. But the thing about him is he's learning on the job. He's slowing the game down mentally. That's where the kids have a lot of problem because he think he has to go at one speed all the time. He's learning how to play at different speeds. Mm -hmm. He's understanding that his spin move is his good move, and he's also looking for treads. He's also looking for guys on the wing. So his maturation now is so good because we watched him in the preseason, and all he did was score, score, score. Yeah. You got to understand, you're not playing the top dogs in the preseason so you can score. And I think he didn't understand that, but he's starting to get it now because when Coach Vogel sat him, he talked to him about you don't have to score all the time, and now he's playing good team Defensive basketball. Defensive assignments as well. Uh, you see him sometimes get caught up, you know, leaving a three-point shooter, uh, maybe doubling at the wrong time. So I think the staff has done a really good job of kind of showing him, here's what we need from you. We know what you can do here, but we need you to be better here. And he's done that. I mean, listen, it's not a surprise. Last year in the bubble, the Vets, AD, uh, Dwight Howard, JaVale McGee, guys like that, Rondo, LeBron, they were talking about – THT, that was the guy that was surprising everyone when they went into the bubble. So he has put in the work, big game James, and man, it's, it's, it's really showing. It's nice. And he got to the line five times and made four of them. Yeah, yeah. They, he, he probably was lighting them up in practice. You know, that's where they start to see <laughs> that maturation. You're a kid like that, goes off on you in practice. But when I look at Tucker, I kind of see a similar, you know, uh, journey that Kuzma had. Mm -hmm. You know, Kuzma came in, we know he could score. And then he had to figure out, although Kuzma had a few more injuries uh, that, he, that, that set him back, uh, you know, Tucker, is he's right there, you know, but he's his learning process has expedited really fast. Uh, like you said, Geeter, coach took him out for defensive mistakes. He had to learn how to play the game. But he's a quick, quick learner to be able to have this type of impact in these games at this young age, uh, I kind of like his process. And he stepped up tonight with no Caruso. You, you know what I like also about him? You can see a lot of, you, you know, I'm big on body language. Sure. And he doesn't have bad body mm -hmm. language. Like when he makes I a agree mistake, with that. he yeah. goes straight to the vets. The vets talk to him, and it's like he says, okay, he put it in a mental note, and he's going to play better. So Not I pouting. like that part. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point, Rob. Hey, uh, listen, LeBron James, um, 98th triple double of his career, fourth of this season. The word that just kind of comes to mind, Rob, was efficient, right? He did it in 30 minutes, which I know you love to see. Uh, eight of 13, 10 rebounds, 11 assists. Got that last rebound. I was like, I know, what, I know what Rob uh, going to say. <laughs> I know what he's going to say. You wanted him out a little early? Hey, oh, hey, I don't care about that triple double. Get out of yeah, the game. Rob. Get out I'm, out too, I'm with you on that one. Yeah. But you know what? I, I understand, though. Sometimes, you know, we all been left in the game before to try yeah. to get that triple double. It's a special yeah. moment to get a triple double, and so uh, I'm not mad at it. But he played it so smart. He kind of just, you know, sat back. That he didn't go out key. and play a little defense. He just sat back and said, "I'm gonna get this triple dub and I'm out." But think about LeBron James. He makes every one around him better. He knows how to play this game. He knows how to get to the hole with so much ease. And when you watch him, it's just he's just a, a master at crafting it with his craft. And I look at that that first half where. He hit those fadeaway jumpers, and in my mind, I'm like saying, bad shot, ooh, it's LeBron. Bad shot, ooh, it's LeBron. Because he makes the shots that are so tough for other guys look so easy, so we, we associate with being a bad shot, but then you have to realize there's no bad shots for LeBron James. And, and I think, Rob, you might have said this at halftime. Defensively, the Lakers were playing great, and they were getting out and getting these easy buckets. James, I'm curious when you're watching these games. I mean, I, I, listen, Showtime kind of set the standard for, for fast break basketball and just the, the flair and the fun, and the, it, it was so fast and the way you guys moved the ball. When LeBron's in transition, man, they move that ball up that floor. It's really a thing of beauty. That's when the Lakers are at their best. Getting hands in the passing lane, getting steals, getting boards, outlet gone. I'm not, LeBron's I'm not gonna, leading the way. I'm not going to lie. It's very similar to the way we play. When LeBron has it, yes. the most beautiful thing about it is he will get it up ahead of time. He doesn't hold on to it. So that is one of their major strengths right behind their defenses. When they get out and run, uh, they're almost unstoppable. And they come in waves. They come with Kuzma, KCP, uh, Tucker. They come with Trez. They come with the whole team, all five guys. So, uh, yeah, it is a major part of their game. I haven't seen it since the Magic Johnson era, really. They, they do a great job of getting that ball up the court. Yeah, I just feel like he, he knows exactly when he's got to take it himself or when he's got to move it up, and, and, and that's a work of art. Yeah, he's, he can read that situation. It's like, okay, if it's a three guys back in the paint, I'm going to bring it up slowly. Yeah. If there's only one guy in the paint, I'm he, going to attack, gone. and I'm going <laughs> to spin and lay it up. So he's a master at it. All right, that was a fun one. Let's